gang. Uh, I wonder if that's the lens. You know what? I should check this before we start the video. Never mind. Uh, does that look foggy to you guys? Hmm. Let me see here. Pardon me. <laughs> that's a little bit better. All right. Let's have a look at Germany at War and let's talk a little bit about this game. I have played this now uh, twice and... The first game was excellent. We were guided by Emanuele, and uh, he he helped both myself and another player, Simone, uh, to play this game. And between the two of us, uh, we had a good time with him him coaching us. And he we he you know helped with the opening move. And with so many of I find with uh, Vadonovo's games, so many of their games, the opening move is something that's often very critical. So it's something you you're going to play several times before you work out what the, the correct opening moves are. So, uh, full disclosure, uh, am I well Am I recording? Yes, I am. <coughs> I uh, uh, graciously gave this game to me uh, because I uh, bought an expensive dinner with him the other night. So this is my gifted copy, uh, which with uh, limited edition, with the same serial number as uh, all my other limited edition versions which is kind of nice uh so here's the deal so we played this game had uh, quite a lot of fun with it and it is a it's not one of those seesaw games where the germans kind of have a bit of an advantage at the beginning of the game and the french really were on the back foot until such time as they bring uh some reinforcements on or some reinforcements arrive or they have an opportunity to reinforce or the fock uh, uh, block arrives, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So it can be somewhat uh, disconcerting when you're playing as the allies and you think the game's over. When in fact it's not over; it's just uh, just beginning. So let's have a quick look. Much smaller box this time. So if I, you know, normally the boxes are you know, yay, yay big, right? And much wider. You get your standard set of blocks, you've got your Germans, your French, your uh, Belgians, and your British forces, the BEF, and various control tokens and stuff like that. No dice in this game either. There is a uh, very nice historical background. Uh, it's here somewhere, this little one pager here, with a little advertising on the back. I also want to talk to you sometime, uh, you guys sometime, uh, about blocks in Africa. It's a really interesting game, and I'm trying to get uh, Emmanuel to get off his hiney and uh, write a campaign scenario for blocks in Africa. You get two of these uh, information sheets, uh, charts. Basically, this is the game right here. Everything you need to know to play, pretty much, is right there. You have your rule book, which is very well laid out and very well organized this time. Uh, uh, some different things happen with supply and lines of command. Some different thing ha things happen with combat. And you have, uh, you still have the typical, it's the same system as Waterloo 200, but it's adapted for World War I. It has uh, special units. There are pontoon engineers, there are pioneers, there are... Uh, uh, special attacks that you can make using um, headquarters. There are no artillery in this this time. Uh, river crossings are going to cause you pain depending on the type of river. There are special attacks that happen with the Fock uh, unit, which I mentioned. Cavalry can retreat before combat in this game, uh, but not if there's another cavalry unit there. There are different terrain effects for different types of units. So it really starts to give a little more depth and richness to the, to the battle. Uh, this is really four months, the beginning of World War I. So don't think you're going to be building trenches or anything like that. Now, why have I got two copies of the rules? I guess that's the limited edition. And there's some, supposed to be some stickers. Here we go. Uh, these are the limited edition uh, art work based stickers and if I just kind of come in here a little bit let's see if we can zoom in you're going to have the very similar situation where you've got the uh, more powerful units will take three hits 
less powerful units only take one hit to uh, two hits to rotate. Uh, it's a one hit unit. You only take one hit to rotate that guy. You've got cavalry. You've got leaders. Infantry of various sizes. They're pretty nice, actually. Hadn't really had a, an opportunity to take a good look at those. Let's see what else we got here. Are the other regular stickers here. Here's the regular stickers, and I quite prefer the regular stickers. Actually, they're just cleaner, more elegant. There you go. Each corps is, uh, or army group is is uh, done in a specific color, so you don't spend any time fussing around trying to find things. There is a large, multi-folded map. And uh, this game, the limited edition, comes with a, a thick laminated cardboard map that sits very nicely. And then there's also, I'll try and set this back. Well, it is foggy, that screen, isn't it? Dang it. Uh, I'm not going to open this all the way out because it is going to be too big for this space. I'm sorry about the, the, the grubby looking screen there, guys. Guys and girls. The three women that watch. Uh, let's see if I can do this. There you go. So I've got it upside down, but you've got the English Channel here, London, Calais, uh, the Ardennes to the left there, and this sort of dark, that dark wooded section there, and then uh, the south of France all the way down to Orleans and Troyes there, I think that, that is, and then it goes over into Germany on this left-hand side that I haven't pulled it out. The map is uh, you know, in classic form, just really well done beautiful map uh, so well, let's talk a little bit more about the gameplay um, like I said I've only played twice now so you have to take everything I say with in, in that context I enjoyed playing the, the very first time I played I found the decision making to be difficult I found found the level of the lack of intelligence uh, in the game um, about my enemy to be really frustrating, uh, and, and why? Why is that? <clears throat> because because you there are so many different little things that pioneer units can do, or cavalry can do, or how terrain effects may affect certain types of units. You are left wondering, you know, if, if there's a cavalry unit in there, will these guys retreat or not? If there's a, not a cavalry unit in there and I've got cavalry, then these folks, I'll, I, I'll get a pursuit opportunity. There's all these other, these other matrix decisions that start popping into this game, and it makes it uh, much more difficult to plan your combat and your assaults than perhaps it is in War of the 200, and I think that's a good thing. It's a bit of a busy board. There's a lot of things on, there are a lot of units on the board and you're constantly shuffling forces around to try and get things moving. And, and I think it, uh, it, can, it could be a little overwhelming for a beginner wargamer. For a seasoned wargamer, I think you're gonna, you're gonna be tired when you're, when you're done playing. It took us a good three hours to play Every bit of three hours, we had a couple of beers. Unfortunately, it was the night of the, of the Paris attacks, so we were very distracted as well. So maybe that kind of added to the time. It could have even been four hours we played. A uh, bit of a nail biter game. It went right down to the wire. I needed to get uh, two kills or three kills to win uh, the, the game. Uh, I went in with uh, some last-ditch big attacks and uh, sadly came away wanting. And then the Allies uh, turned the turned the war around and won uh, won the scenario with the the tenth or the twentieth uh, unit killed or whatever the case may be um, to generate a surrender of the German army. So really, really interesting, fun game. Now, with that said, I swapped sides the next day and I played Germany at war against Emanuele. And man, you know, that was the difference of experience there because I just, the game was over and, you know, I think uh, two turns, we were done. And I w I'm trying to divorce the, the feeling of losing the game against the game itself. 
because I really was kind of pissed off at how quickly I lost and how easily I, my units got chewed up. And it was very frustrating. Oh, by the way, when I said I went before, when I said I lost, uh, the, the Allies have to lose 20 units, I think, to lose the game. And the Germans only need to lose 10. That's basically how it works out. You know, so the, the Allies are, in essence, more resilient. So I think that it's a game that I would need to play quite a few times more than perhaps I would for, say, Waterloo 200 to become more richly engaged with the game and more experienced with the game. So there is that. But I don't know, given it's World War One, that it's a game that I want to play enough to master it. And that's more because I'm not that interested in the topic than I'm than I'm not interested in the system. Which is interesting for me because uh, while I like Vento Nuovo games, this one does not capture my heart as much as World of 200 has and blocks in Africa and blocks in the East and blocks in the West have. Particularly blocks in the East. I mean, that's a, that's a friggin' amazingly great fun game. Uh, Blocks in the West is a good game, and Blocks in the Africa and Blocks in Africa is a great game, uh, but Blocks in the East is superb. This, you know, if you like World War One and you want to play a pretty cool scenario that, that is about the first four or six months of the of the wars or four months, I forget. Uh, yeah, here's the losses you need to accumulate. You put the you put the killed units on the track here. So I think if you're interested in World War One and you want to play something that is gorgeous to look at. Uh, he's got all these fortress, uh, these fortress units on the map too. I didn't really talk about those. Easy to set up, and that can actually play out reasonably quickly if you're a seasoned player. I could see this going pretty fast, but you will get to some points where you're thinking about, man, I've got these, you know, circles. These are garrisons, uh, and these fortresses here. How should I attack this the best? Should I use my pioneers and eliminate? Uh, the garrison and then attack the fortress or should I try and isolate it and then uh, induce uh, attrition how what 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 should I do you know there's lots of choices to be made and that in of itself is great but I found you know I just found I was completely unprepared to play the allies in this particular instance and I think I was surprised at how inept I was uh, given how relatively well I played as the Germans the the prior night so don't buy this game unless you're prepared to invest the time to play it several times to become familiar with both sides i would say in general it's probably easier to play the germans than it is the allies so the more experienced person should probably be playing the allies before they play the germans oh, sorry if they're playing with a an inexperienced person that person should probably play the germans and you probably should coach them a little bit on on how to you know do their opening move because you really need to get through the sedan and, and and get across the river down here uh and and press and threaten paris or calais or whatever it may be unless uh if you if you want to have a chance of winning as the germans so a very interesting title I would certainly have a look at it if you're into wargaming at all. I would certainly look at it if you are prepared to put the time in and play it many times because it's going to take that uh, level of effort to become effective at playing and uh, and uh, beautiful components and whatnot. So, all right. And the rules, uh, the rules, I will say, uh, the rules are very well done. I went through them before I played on the plane and I uh, had a quick look at them while we were playing. We rarely needed to look things up, uh, so I was uh, very pleased. All right, that's a bit of a long video, but all the best guys. Talk to you soon.